the contours of Riemann's graph appear to expose the hidden pattern of the primes that eluded mathematicians for centuries. But a recent breakthrough in analysing this graph has unearthed some startling parallels between the abstract world of the primes and the physical world that surrounds us. Which is why Marcus has brought me here to the National Physical Laboratory. We're going to undertake an experiment. Well, Anne, what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to strike this quartz sphere with a ball bearing ball. That doesn't sound very technical. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not very technical. I like this kind of physics. <laughs> it's, it's not technical, but it is effective. Underneath, there are contact microphones, uh -huh. and they convert the vibrations into an electrical signal. OK, good. This sounds like a quite straightforward experiment. Yeah, I guess it is quite straightforward, <laughs> but I'm one... I'm guessing the consequences are more important than that. Yeah, in a way, this thing is very... Very big, Marcus, it, No, absolutely, this is why I brought you. Most time. Uh, yeah. I've had a lot of pressure. This is more than darts okay. in the pub. I've got to hit that flat bit. Try, try your best, Dan. I've yeah. got to get... I'll get quite close to it, yeah. shall I, to make sure. Good, wow! Look at that now, look, look at did. that now. Look, look what, what you've done there. I threw it quite hard. You man. did, yeah, that's right. It almost <laughs> went off the scale there. Sorry. But, but every, <laughs> every little peak here corresponds to a vibration of this quartz sphere. And the crucial thing you notice is that the way in which those are distributed is related to the series of prime numbers. This means that if you analyse the distribution of the quartz's vibrations, and do the same for the contours of Riemann's graph, you'll see a remarkably similar result. So similar, it cannot be a coincidence. So there's some naturally occurring thing in nature that links us... Is that Riemann? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if, only I'd, if only I'd known about is, the quartz. Is there a Dala friend? <laughs> I'd like to dial a friend. I did all those sums for years, <laughs> and I just had to throw a ball bearing and a bit of quartz. Well, yeah. But it's in nature, it's naturally occurring, and yet it coincides with the work of this genius mathematician from 200 years ago. And it's similar enough. For you to think, well, we might, are we on to something? Exactly. Similar enough that this can't just be the a coincidence. The number patterns so similar to naturally occurring phenomena, if you like, that maybe we're on to something. Yeah, I think this is, this is not just a coincidence. It's a message telling us that the maths which is going on behind this, the way this quartz is vibrating will be the similar sort of maths which will help us to explain the way the primes are distributed. So that odd little list of weird-looking numbers that don't appear to relate to one another and it's not actually very pleasant to look at because we like things to go 2, 4, 6, 8. It's actually... This is where the pattern is. They're found everywhere and they could be the key to everything. <laughs> <laughs> This mysterious connection is found elsewhere, too. On a microscopic scale, quantum energy levels in atoms like uranium match this pattern. Bizarrely, a parallel also exists at the municipal level, in the distribution of bus arrival times in a little-known Mexican city. There's even a connection between Riemann's graph and the distribution of parked cars in modern-day London. <laughs> <laughs>